It's episode 12 of Ray's Franchise, and I'm here uh, in a much uh, more positive note than it seems from other episodes. Not that we ever did uh, absolutely awful, but just a lot of underperforming recently and missing the playoffs and just all of that. Um, but uh, I'm happy to report that, that your 2025 Tampa Bay Rays are off to a much uh, better uh, start, uh, much more in line with the expectations. Um, and actually, I mean, right now we're sitting second in the AL East, uh, just a game back um, from the Yankees. And um, but to be honest, we are uh, we, we were playing a lot better uh, to start off the season. We just kind of hit a little bit of a rough patch, nothing too serious. But the last month um, uh, in June was a little bit uh, underperforming. And I'll show you that in a second. But uh, as you can see, also, the Yankees seem to be um, overperforming a little bit uh, according to the Pythagorean uh, and also we have a you know plus 33 uh, run differential um, in our favor more so um, I think we're overall a better team uh, right now than the Yankees um, but uh, as you can see this is just kind of a look around the league you can see um, where we're at but yeah we're, we're in a great place much better place this year uh, and I will show you we'll go to I'll just show you real quick the the info here uh, as you can see in June, we went, uh, 11 and 16. So not great, but if you look at our April, I mean, we were 19 and eight in, in April. So that's to show, uh, you know, we had a great start. Look at our, our team offense, uh, in the AL, um, second and third. in a lot of these towards the middle when it comes to, uh, the long ball. Um, but yeah, I mean, so you can't really complain about our offense is really performing well. Our, our pitching, um, is improved much improved from last year uh for sure um our starters are playing uh a lot better a bullpen is kind of middle of the road right now um but you know 362 you know team era from the bullpen is not, it's not bad so it must just be a good bullpen year across the league um and i mean we do you know 408 uh in the in the uh, runs allowed you know middle of the pack and the al as far as home runs allowed so that's kind of where we're we're getting hurt but still not bad at all and let's look at the the team real quick uh i won't go through everybody but just some some standouts uh first and foremost i still gotta say shane boz um remember he did have that injury uh he missed a little bit with an el elbow strain um this season he was out for five weeks but since he's been back is just He's not been good. <laughs> I hate to say it. He's got a 69 ERA plus, uh, you know, I mean, still positive war technically, um, but a 1.6 whip on um, the ERA is up at 6.16. Um, you know, he's letting up close to two home runs per nine, um, three walks per nine. Uh, the strikeouts are, are still pretty high, so that's good. Um, but man, this is just not what we want from our, from our ace, you know. Um, that's a little disappointing to see. Um, but our star rotation, other than that, Shane McClanahan definitely having a bounce back year. Not absolutely, you know, crazy numbers, but still much improved from last year, which uh, I am not complaining about whatsoever. Um, who else do we got here? Drew Rasmussen's been pretty healthy, right? Uh, yeah, he missed a, a little bit. Well, no, I guess he did miss a, a, a bit this year with a strained abdominal muscle, tired arm. He, you know, he's got the fragile tag now, but uh, he's pitching pretty well. He is below league average when it comes to ERA plus, but you know, still up towards uh, two WAR. The WHIPs, um, okay. Um, home runs per nine are really good, um, and ERA is is not too bad. So not bad for a third rotation. Uh, JJ Goss, uh, he's in his first full season here. Um, is pitching pretty well. Uh, it kind of that's kind of our theme for for most of our pitchers. So they're all pitching good. Uh, no no you know standout aces right now, um, but JJ Goss is, is definitely worth the fourth rotation piece uh, there. Um, we also have Gri Griffin Canning that honestly sometimes I just forget is, is on the team because he was a pretty sure he, he was a waiver wire pickup last year. Uh, yeah, he's a waiver wire pickup just to help out with some injuries uh, and whatnot. But he's actually. Probably our best pitcher, pitcher, uh, our best starter right now <laughs> in our team. Um, he's making a, I mean, he was definitely a, an expendable piece, uh, but he's definitely making it hard to to move after you know he's he's putting up some pretty good numbers. You know he's twenty percent above league average in ERA plus, so um, that's not bad whatsoever. Um, our bullpen's pretty good. Uh, nothing too much to complain about here. Clayton Andrews, uh, our waiver wire pickup, having a bit of a rough go. Um, you know, not anything absolutely insane though, but everybody else is having a, a fairly good year. 
as you can see here, uh, we're sorting by ERA plus here. You can see um, a lot of our, you know, more than half of our team is right around the uh, 100 or above, um, just a couple, but even like in the 80s here is not, you know, crazy bad. It's just Shane Boz is just kind of the eyesore there, but that's all right. We'll move on to the offense. Um, we'll sort of by war here because if you look, Wander Franco, uh, he is already off to a blistering uh, start, 4.4 war uh, in his July 1st. So that's, I think he's going to break his his single season war record of 5.2 from last year. Uh, yeah, he's well on his way. He's having a tremendous year. He's showing a lot of power as well. He's already got 20 home runs um, this year. Um, you know, 948 OPS, uh, you know, and then also, of course, hidden for average at, at 3.23. So great year, obviously what we need from our, our cornerstone of our team. And this is what I wanted to see here is a huge breakout season from Michael Bush. Uh, he is, is tearing it up, you know, a, over a thousand on OPS, 82% above league average. <laughs> Excuse me, sorry, hit, hit, uh, he already had 3.8 war. He's got 21 home runs already. Uh, just exactly what we wanted to see. Um, it really become the Andrew Vaughn replacement, kind of what I was hoping Andrew Vaughn would be, uh, is, is what Michael Bush is, is doing right now. Uh, lefty bat, uh, and also very cheap. He is going to be arbitration eligible uh, this season, and he's going to want a lot. So that's kind of good timing for him to make money, not so much good timing for, for us <laughs> as far as saving money. Um, we got Manny, uh, Man Manny Margot here, uh, having a great season as always. Um, I'll, I'll show you in a second. Brian Reynolds has been struggling with injury and just poor for poor performance. Uh, so Manny's kind of taken back over the uh, starting uh, center field job and of course is doing a great job. I, I honestly very much leaning towards trying to re-sign Manny for a few more years to, to hold down our center field um, and, and um, you know, we'll just go right to it. We'll, we'll, we'll skip over to, we'll go to Brian Reynolds. He's our, really our only injury right now. He's out with a strained oblique, um, just really struggling. 82 uh, OPS plus, um, hitting 223, you know, nothing great. But again, he's, he's been struggling with some injuries. Um, hasn't been out there consistently. So I might look to, I don't know. It's going to be tough with him being, he's most likely going to be injured still uh, through the trade deadline. I, I do have it turned on where I can trade injured players, uh, but obviously the, you know, AI is going to wait that and and probably not going to give me a ton for him. So kind of up in the air, maybe I'll try to, to deal Brian Reynolds uh, or, you know, I can just offer him the, the qualifying offer uh, this off season, just kind of take my draft pick for him and just kind of save money, put that elsewhere uh, on the team. Cause he's going to want, He's wanting a pretty sizable contract. Yeah, I mean, eight years, which I'm never going to give him uh, in, in a good amount of money. You know? <laughs> so um, not looking to do that. Brian Reynolds might be one of the odd men out because we knew we were going to have to. We we're kind of all in a little bit. You know, we're paying a decent chunk of money to a, a lot of players, especially on the offensive side. Um, so we're going to knew we're going to have to make some some decisions this offseason. So uh, I think one of my number one goals is definitely to bring back Manny Margot, uh, who's just been he's just been a. Uh, uh, consistent uh that's the best way to describe him i mean last year was a bit of a down year offensively but still putting up 3.4 war with that with that defense uh is not bad at all and he had you know 5.3 war season um uh a season before that and he's well on his way to more of a season like that this year uh we're going around the five war mark so i mean that that's a star right there so uh yeah, let's let's keep back. Uh, let's look because also too that will free up spots for uh, uh, having Brian Reynolds off the team. Will free up spot for a couple of our young outfielders. Uh, definitely save money that way. Um, as we've got uh, Jose Ramos here um, because of the injuries, he's been up batting really well for us. 18% above uh, league average and OPS plus when when he's been out there. Can't complain. Offering solid corner uh, outfield defense as well. Um, yeah, he's off to a great start as a Ray. Uh, love to see that. I also have, I think Colton Kowser had to get sent down. Sorry, it's starting to storm a little bit out there if you can hear that. <laughs> um, well, where is he? Where is he? Colton Kowser. Why can't, why am I seeing him? Oops. Kowser. There he is. Oh, I guess he was on the team. Am I just blind? Okay. No, he's still up with it. Anyways, Colin Kowser, uh, kind of the lefty equivalent of, of Jose Ramos there, is also um, 
been playing a good uh, deal for us this year. Um, and he's off to a great start as well. 12 OPS, uh, 112 OPS plus, hitting 267. Um, pretty okay, he hit five home runs already in, in 150 uh, at bats. So not bad at all, loving to see that. Um, would definitely prefer to turn to some guys like that um, to our outfield to save some money because um, I really do think this is going to be the last year for Randy on the team. Um, his offense, just not there. I mean, not a ton of opportunities, but he just hasn't shown it. Uh, you know, he's, def he's definitely been regulated to off the bench. You can see his ratings are going down. He's down to a 45 overall here. Um, we'll look at his scouting. Yeah, I mean, you can see I mean, his, his just he just never developed fully um, into what I think he can become, uh, especially in real life. And he's going to want around, you know, six to seven million arbitration. And uh, we could definitely use that money elsewhere. To I'd rather put that in to save, um, to put towards maybe re-signing Manny Margot and then let, you know, Kowser or Ramos be, um, uh, you know, kind of take Randy's place on the team. Uh, what else here? War... Uh, this was a, a cool uh, addition here. Uh, Lu Shen Ko, uh, he's from Taiwan. Uh, we got him from, I'm pretty sure he's just a, a you know, an, a generated player. Uh, but he hit the trading blocks uh, pretty early in the season when I was dealing with some injuries. Um, he was having a really good year for the Orioles, uh, but they uh, put him on the trading block. And we traded them Nick Gordon, who is having a really rough go with us, <laughs> 31 uh, OPS plus. Um, again, you know, uh, maybe I jumped the gun too soon, but when I saw somebody who's uh, having a really hot streak, um, you know, is pitching or sorry, pitching, what, um, you know, let me go, gosh, dang it. <laughs> uh, we'll show you his numbers here. I mean, with Baltimore, he was hitting 149 OPS plus already put up 1.2 war and that was just in 115 plate appearances. Uh, yeah, he was he was looking pretty good. Uh, very intriguing defensively. Um, he's right now he just has third base ready, but he's mostly been DHing for us. Um, and as you can see, he's, he's kept it up uh, with us in 94 plate appearances. He's put up 144 OPS plus, hitting 295, hit us three home runs for us. So he's he's been uh, good for us. Uh, we were, wasn't really expecting bringing in another bat like that, but. Uh, getting rid of a player who was kind of struggling uh, to bring in uh, a player who was on fire. Uh, not complaining about that. As much as I love Nick Gordon, what he did for us and, and the little bit he was up with the team, um, or he was with the uh, the Rays here um, with his flexibility. He was struggling. He's also out right now with a partially torn labrum for the Orioles. So I think we kind of won that trade. And, and Lushenko is also uh, cheap too. Uh, he's only on like a $1.5 million contract. Pretty sure Nick Gordon, yeah, I mean, he's getting even into arbitration where he's going to get a little bit expensive. So, uh, been liking that trade. Lucian, one of our better hitters right now. Luis Garcia has been great. We've had him all over playing second base, third base, left field, um, and he's blending in really well with the team, uh, playing very well. Uh, can't Not much to say, honestly. 15 home runs, uh, hitting almost 300. He's on pace for... You know, not, I guess not a huge season, uh, you know, still around the 2.4 war mark. Um, but uh, yeah, still not complaining. Brandon Lowe was, uh, not Lowe, uh, Brandon Lau was out for a bit with injuries. He's been battling, but when he's been in, he's been having a pretty good year. He is coming up on a team option, um, which we'll probably end up taking. Um, still not a guarantee he's gonna be on the team uh, this next year uh, or the year uh, past this um, because uh, we just have a lot of infield depth. Uh, Cronenworth is having another good year. Kind of playing all around for us uh, as well. Um, Keep it Ruiz is playing pretty pretty okay. The offense is not super good, but um, he's holding it down defensively. Uh, it's nice having another uh, like a switch hitting uh, uh, option there. Also been really impressed by uh, Blake Hunt holding it down as a, uh, you know, <laughs> I guess I'm saying that and it's not crazy numbers by no means, but uh, being a solid backup catcher, that's exactly what we wanted him there for. Um, and that's pretty much everybody other than Gavin Lux, who is kind of, I think he's definitely an odd man out, definitely a uh, a, uh, a trade deadline piece maybe to throw in a deal to maybe bring something else to improve the team or um, honestly just a move because uh, he's gonna, he wants a lot of money in arbitration, 13 million, and that, that could be a key chunk of money that could go towards uh, Manny Margot, 
Um, and then with Lux gone, we still might be able to get Manny and maybe still hold on to like Cronenworth and Lau um, as our kind of middle infield options, as well as Luis Garcia. So that's kind of where the team's looking like. Um, obviously Curtis Mead is not up right now. Oh, K Kate Cavalli, uh, pretty disappointing uh, when he was up with us, uh, but uh, we, again, kind of shuffling the team. Uh, sorry, I don't have like the specifics, but kind of shuffling the team around um, because of uh, injuries and just kind of options remaining. Kate Cavalli was able to be optioned down to triple A. Um, so that's where we have him right now because uh, he he was pretty bad. Um, he's around kind of Shane Boz level uh, of bad when he had him up, but he is um, kind of not having too much uh, competition there in triple A. He's, he's having a really good year down there. So um, he will probably be up again soon, especially barring any injuries. Uh, other than that, anybody else really talk about Andrew Vaughn? Probably going to move him because he's hitting arbitration. I uh, don't really want to pay that. So he might be, you know, a bundle deal uh, to get to upgrade somewhere else. Curtis Mead, how is he doing? I know we optioned him pretty early. Um, it, yeah, he was not great. <laughs> he actually put up negative 0.6 war in his 126 at bats, uh, or sorry, 136 plate appearances up with the team. Uh, but he's playing really well in AAA. Uh, but we've just had the Lushan Co uh, up for us right now, and he is. Uh, playing really well it's kind of taking over Mead's spot there so definitely some players that are now expendable because of other players playing well uh he still you know want to see what Man manzardo does so would love to bring him up at some point uh anybody else so kendall williams i'm trying to remember no he hasn't been up yet but uh he's another uh pitching option but yeah that's kind of where the team's at um, I kind of also was able to give you a little bit of a rundown as far as kind of looking into uh, looking forward to like the trade deadline and whatnot. Um, let's see here. We are in the middle of we are in the middle of the international trading or what? Sorry, international uh, prospect uh, amateur signings. Uh, I'm great right now. I'm going after this guy Matsumoto. Um, looking really good. I mean, look at this uh, from Japan. Great defense. A, a lot of times I've noticed like international amateurs, <laughs> they can have some funky defensive ratings. But um, you know, this guy, he he's gonna play. You know, gold gold glove level corner outfield and can definitely play some center if you need him to. Uh, especially with this bat. I mean, look at that and 75 speed. I mean, this guy's uh, you know five five tools right there. Um, got the power. Got the contact. So. Excited for that. Hopefully he signs on with us. Um, but yeah, I think that's pretty much it. This is kind of just an overview uh, of our team here. Uh, got an important series with the Yankees coming up after we're done with the Cubs here. Uh, and yeah, I guess we'll, we'll keep this episode going. I'll, I'll stop it here. But uh, yeah, I'll catch up with you guys in a little bit once we'll uh, kind of work through uh, the trade deadline here in kind of the middle of the season. Okay, we're back. I want to apologize. I know this is halfway through an episode, but I am recording this yet again. Classic uh, uh, K-Rod here. Uh, <laughs> recording this uh, pretty much a month later from <laughs> literally the, the, the same Kyle that you just heard a couple seconds ago. Uh, so, um, yeah, I'm sorry, guys. It has just been a uh, very busy season for me as for my work. Um, just a ton going on. A ton of family stuff happening, too. Um, but, hey, we're back. Uh, I got some time. Uh, we're going to record. I'm going to try to remember um, what this team is looking like. I have so many other ideas for, for YouTube videos and stuff. Like I, I want to give it all a shot. It's just been tough to be able to find some time to be able to record, get it all edited and whatnot. But uh, anyways, back, race franchise. Uh, love these guys. Love this series. I'm excited. We're at July 11th now. Um, as you can still still playing uh, pretty well, 53 and 40. Um, I'm going to show you. I went through the I do remember I did go through the draft already. So I'm just going to show you um, the picks. At least the first couple ones here. Um, so my number, my my first round pick here was Pete De Felice. Uh, not, I mean, you can see right here. Uh, not a whole lot to say, dude. Looks like he can uh, swing the bat a little bit, or at least can uh, soon. He's 18 years old, coming out of high school. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously not great uh, defensively, but he can play a little first base, a little corner outfield. He's got a great arm. Um, but man, look at you know, if this fully develops, man, that's you know. That's a, a stud right there. Oh, going back to 
bring it down the bar. Okay, uh, second round pick. Uh, well, actually, no. Did I have? Yeah, second round. Okay, I didn't. I forgot if I had any compensatory picks or anything. Got Tony Sampaio here. Just your typical kind of looks like a. A solid first bat slugger, uh, you know, 65 home run power. Again, you know, you've seen these kind of profiles before. Um, he is a Venezuelan Colombian, also 18 years old. Uh, yeah, like that pick as well. We got Andy Peterson here, uh, solid defensive, a little, um, you know, infielder here. Can play all over the place. Has a little bit of ratings in the outfield. He's got a great outfield ratings too, so he can really play anywhere on the diamonds. Got solid contact. You know, great avoid Ks, love that. Gap power is great. Uh, <laughs> don't know how much it helps. And also high work ethic, high intelligence. Um, so he feels like it should be a pretty pretty solid pick here. Another 18 years old there. Um, we got a starting pitcher here uh, coming out of college, right? Yes, coming out of LSU, uh, Caleb Appleby. Uh, looks pretty good. Starting pitching prospect, uh, righty. Yep, 22 years old, so obviously a little bit older. Oh, is he, he is 6'8". That is a large man. Okay, uh, we got Doug Cooley here. Uh, fourth fourth round? Fifth round? Something? Fifth round. Uh, fifth round pick, another 18-year-old coming out of high school. Uh, you know, more of a power bat, kind of an all-or-nothing type thing. He has low work ethic, so... Uh, bad pick by me. No, just kidding. Uh, <laughs> and then we have a random seventh round here, a catcher. Uh, pretty, I think I picked him just because he's stuck on the board. Had you know solid catcher ability, so it'd be good for the minor leagues. And you know if he fully develops, I could see him possibly becoming a uh, major league piece there. Um, so I believe that's pretty much everything. Um, you know, not a ton more has happened since we did have. Uh, Griffin Canning went down with a torn road kit, rotator cuff. I don't believe that happened in the last race. So he's going to be out for four months, and he was one of our better pitchers, uh, believe it or not. Uh, we do have um, Brian Reynolds is still, still injured four weeks with a strained oblique. Probably going to try to move him. Uh, we already know that. Shane Boz, been struggling. Not great. Um, just high whip. ERA plus is not great. ERA obviously is not great at six. He's coming off an injury here. I forget what it was. Uh, okay, just a mild abdominal strain. But uh, probably, honestly, might put him on a rehab assignment to let some of our other pitchers kind of go for it here. I mean, Katie Cavalli's not been much better, uh, to be fair. So honestly, maybe we should just option Cavalli back once he gets off, once Boz comes off the IL. Uh, well, I think he's, well, let's see. I think he's been better. Okay, well, you know, <laughs> four, five, three, two, one, earned runs. I mean, he pitched a full. I mean, this four earned run game. He he pitched. He was a it was a full game. It was a complete game. Nine innings pitch. So, uh, I don't know. I don't know. Tough. Uh, tough to kind of analyze. Well, I think he's getting a little bit better. I guess we shall say. Um, well, let's see. Our bullpen's been great. Uh, how are we doing here? As far as the team offensively, a lot of players looking good. I mean, you love to see a bunch of hundreds and above when it comes to WRC plus. Michael Bush still killing it, um, putting up comparable numbers to to Wander here. Wander's having a great year. Uh, Lu Shan Ko still going strong. Uh, let's just kind of see. Is he cooling off at all? No. I mean, okay. I mean, three games into July, he's not been amazing, but he's still got the whole rest of the month left. Um, Luis Garcia is still playing well. Who's struggling? Yeah, Gavin Lux is still struggling. He's probably going to need to be kind of a, a, a cap room casualty uh, coming up here in the trade deadline. Uh, Randy also, because he's going to want, you know, he wants seven million or something ridiculous for, and his his um, ratings are plummeting. But you kind of already knew that. Um, so I think uh, I'm going to pause again. I promise. <laughs> I'm not gonna wait a month in between this pause right now. I'm going to play right now uh, I'm going to hang out I'm gonna go through the trade deadline and see if anything else pops up move around uh, Maybe even play a little bit of kind of live so you can kind of see my thought process We'll see um, kind of depending on, on how boring. I think it <laughs> will be um, Yeah, anything else? No, I think that's pretty much it. I will real quick. I guess we'll we'll double check uh, The oops I think I want, I forget how to play. Pull. Uh, cut. Okay, duh. I was in the, the league, not the team settings. Okay, we're back. Um, 
Let me just double check here for any major transactions. No, I mean, obviously, Boz and Canning going down, Reynolds down. Uh, Nick, are, we already showed you all that. Yeah, so I mean, that's pretty much it. I just kind of went a little bit farther. Uh, I'm going to cut now and keep going uh, and get through the, the trade deadline. See you in a second. Okay, trade deadline uh, has come and gone. We're now at August 1st. I just want to point out too that we are struggling a little bit. Uh, June was pretty rough. I didn't really realize that. July better, but uh, pretty much 500, um, and that's not great. Uh, but we're you know we're still doing okay as far as uh, standings go. We are second to the Yankees right now. Um, and a uh, wild card, uh, we're in second place right now with a, with a decent little, uh, well, two games up on the last wild card spot, which is the Kansas City Royals. Um, we did make some moves. Uh, we cleared up some space. I was able to actually sign some players pre-arb, um, to kind of save a little bit of money there. Um, but let's, uh, let's take a look real quick. Um, we had a couple, couple big trades and a big um, contract ext uh, contract extension as well. Uh, let's see here. All right. <clears throat> Down to the bottom, anything here? Uh, our draft picks signed, so that's great. Um, Shane Boz just ended up coming back uh, to the active roster. He's pitching uh, a tad bit better, a little bit, so Kate Cavalli is back in Durham. Uh, anything else here? Oh, Lushan Co. Uh, went down with some back stiffness. Uh, not an awful injury, but I'm glad I put him. I put him on the IR, um, and I'm kind of uh, okay with it, uh, just because it has been a lingering uh, issue now, um, and he does not have a certain return time uh, quite yet. But that's all right. So we have plenty of batters to take over. Um, Nick Anderson is, of course, right when I uh, was probably going to trade him because he is on his contract year. Um, he uh, went down towards UCL. He's out for ten months. Um, if I were like his, yeah, I mean, his price, I guess, is technically going down now, but at this point, probably just gonna let him walk now um, with a big injury contract year. Don't want to pay a ton of guy, uh, money to a guy that's going to be out for the majority of the next year. Uh, so it just kind of made our decision better. Um, I mean, obviously feel for him, but uh, that's it. He's probably spent his last time with the uh, Tampa Bay Rays here. Okay, uh, first big trade. Brian Reynolds is now a Philadelphia Philly. We shipped him over there. Um, he had some decent um, return, uh, you know, some a decent amount of uh, interest from a lot of players or from a lot of teams. Wow, I'm struggling. And we also sent over Michael Aliaga here, who's just kind of a, you know, whatever filler um, starting pitcher that they liked uh, in return. Oh, we also sent over Trey Sweeney, who never really... Uh, got the you know hit the ground running with us. We kind of picked him up and just kind of like a last second trade with the Yankees um, I think it was like a reliever wasn't it? Oh, not uh, editor. Uh, Yeah, we were getting rid of Reese McGuire there. So um, but um, So and he's also he's got the fragile tag now uh, And also just was not playing super well in triple-a so I was okay with it also freed up a 40-man spot because in return we got Ethan Wilson um, who I'm gonna be perfectly honest. He was not super high scouting accuracy at the time and he was rated um, Quite a bit higher than this. Uh, not that that's everything obviously um, But so that made it a little bit more of a kind of a no-brainer when I thought it was that uh, new Obviously there was a chance that it was gonna come down But I didn't think so because he had you know only 97 at-bats or you know 112 plate appearances with the Phillies in the time and he was raking uh, in the time that he was up with the Phillies, and uh, I mean, he's been destroying pretty much all of the minor league ball that he's been. Okay, maybe destroying is is a long, um, you know, is a stretch. But uh, big time power hitter, another lefty bat, which we don't necessarily need. Um, but in the four games he's been playing with us, uh, he has already hit a homer. You know, he's you know over 1,000 in OPS. So I'm hoping he can keep that up. Uh, great bat, and also. Um, I loved it is because he is still on a you know rookie contract not an arbitration yet So saving some money here. Hopefully getting some great production from somebody saving some money and uh, We also were able to we were we threw those other players because it was pretty much a one you know one for one Reynolds for Wilson there uh, But we also threw uh, we also got in the deal uh, Dominic Keegan uh, a, a obviously bat first uh, catcher here 
not an amazing ability, but just to be kind of our third catcher, uh, you're gonna we don't really we didn't really have one. Um, but I'm happy with what uh, Ruiz and uh, Hunt are doing right now. But you know, so I, I kind of I still liked having a younger player here, you know, on cheap contract, um, and he will be there just in case of any injuries. And then we also picked up uh, Mick Abel, who is a former pretty high draft pick, I believe, for the Phillies in real life. Um, he is going to be Rule 5 eligible, you know, nothing too crazy. He's still got some potential. Um, you know, uh, we were able to get him added to the deal, and so I was okay with that. Obviously, get a little bit older um, to, you know, not make a debut yet, but he might be a trade piece. He might be somewhere to add to our rotation because, uh, you, know, you know, as we've seen, we have a lot of big contracts, a lot of players in arbitration, um, you know, kind of running up our salaries, and um, so we'll have to make some decisions here. But anyway, so... I'm happy with it. Reynolds was not doing much for us this year. He was contract year. Uh, you know, we most likely were not bringing him back. He, uh, so we were just really just, and he's been injured a ton this year. So we're really just trying to get as much value as we could in return for him. And I think we did okay. Um, we also did that without really adding a ton of, you know, we were able to cut down a lot of money right now that's able to, you know, let us um, sign some players and whatnot. Uh, so also big one. Uh, the other big one was trading away Gavin Lux. He is now a member of the Chicago White Sox, who has been a consistent trade partner for us, if I remember correctly. Um, again, he was, his main story was just that he was going to be worth a lot of money in arbitration. Um, a lot of money we did not want to give him uh, for a player who is struggling uh, mightily with us. Uh, White Sox has been playing pretty well in the few games that he's been there. Um, we didn't get a, a huge return for him. Uh, for Lux, to be honest, he didn't have a ton of uh, interest. Uh, we also threw in Alex Ayala Jr., uh, just you know, starting pitching prospect again, nothing too crazy. Um, he's already 23 years old. Uh, we sent him over to the White Sox. Our main piece here was Patrick Riley, who is technically is just a bullpen arm, but he could be a pretty good stopper with some good stamina here. Uh, he looks really good. Um, obviously, you know, a bullpen arm for, you know, a solid young player, maybe not the biggest, you know, best value in return, but he was easily one of the best players that was being offered to me when I was kind of shopping uh, Lux around and again, saving a ton of money because he is a, uh, you know, going to be a, he's still on his minor league contract. He is rule five eligible, but we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Still a lot less money than the like 13, 14, 15 million <laughs> that Lux was going to command in arbitration. Um, we were also able to pick up uh, Lennon Sosa here just to kind of be another, uh, he's getting rid, of, uh, getting rid of Sweeney, kind of just need another little um, infield uh, player to back up. And he actually is up with the team right now just to kind of be a backup because um, we don't have a great a lot of depth at like shortstop, you know, and he's not even obviously amazing um, Defensively, but he's a little bit better than having kind of Cronenworth and uh, Wander kind of going back and forth playing shortstop So uh, just as a, kind of a backup bat and he's a righty We have a ton of lefties right now. So just I think having a righty option is good But he's got solid um, batting ratings, uh, you know 60 contacts not bad Obviously his eye is not great, but avoid uh, avoid K's is really high So, you know, I still see potential there to, to be able to be you know provide a little bit of a spark off the bench here and this was our pretty much our last big um transaction not really a transaction but roster move excuse me um we signed luis garcia to a a, a fairly large uh, contract extension here uh, over eight years uh just under 120 million dollars i think i, I want to look at this and say that it's a uh, um, it's a bargain, honestly. I mean, it, at most, it gets to his twenty-eight, his age twenty-eight and twenty-nine season. Um, in a few years, the the biggest the contract's going to be is at nineteen million. He does have an opt-out uh, after his twenty-nine-year-old uh, season in twenty twenty-nine, uh, but because it will uh, decrease in value, but down to fifteen million. But uh, for a guy that can, you know, is going to be probably a perennial all-star already, only at twenty-five years old. Partnering him up with Wander uh, for the next, you know, future, I think is really good. I see Luis Garcia probably taking over second base full time away from Lau, away from Cronenworth um, and kind of being a, a, you know, infield buddy. We obviously we've been using him kind of everywhere and he still might. But um, yeah, I think he's kind of he's just a solid piece for the future. Um, and so I'm really excited for that. Only 25 years old, having a great season with us. Um, you know, obviously, I mean, two and a half war, you know, he's he's projected at three and a half war. Would love to see him get up into like, you know, the five war um, kind of, you know, really high. But, you know, it still can't complain. 835 OPS. 
Um, you know, and, and hopefully the power develops a little bit more here and he can just really be an all around player, play a little bit everywhere for us. Second, third corner outfield. Um, yeah, so excited for that. I think that was an okay move there. Um, not an absolutely massive contract uh, that we can't handle as the Rays with the smaller market. And that's pretty much it. We sent Meade back down to AAA so that we can bring up the Lennon uh, Sosa, right? I believe is his name. Yeah. Um, so, because uh, Meade is definitely struggling. He's destroying AAA, <laughs> but can't do anything in the majors right now. So, um, that's not great. And uh, let's see. I think that's really it, guys. I mean, we're going to... I think I'll let this go for uh, kind of first half of the season. Again, I apologize for the wait um, for this episode, but I will try my best. It's still busy, but I will still, uh, but a lot less kind of like traveling. So I should be around more to be able to find some time to, to record. Um, but I'm probably going to keep playing to get to the postseason in that, but we'll save that for uh, the next episode. So uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Please, you know, hit the like button, share with a friend, somebody that might like these uh, those videos. That'd be great. I appreciate it so much. Um, you know, just the guys that are going to be sticking with me, <laughs> despite my kind of up and down. So uh, thanks, guys. Have a great night uh, or day night for me. <laughs> um, and uh, I'll, I'll see you next time.